Homeschooling Kindergarten offers a unique opportunity to create a personalized, engaged educational journey right from the beginning. You learn to nurture their natural curiosity and recognize how their play is actually educational. You foster that love for learning that everyone talks about, and you can help build a strong foundation for their purposeful, unique futures. So if you're a first-year homeschooler, or you know someone who's heading into their first-year homeschool, this podcast episode is for you. Welcome to the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Podcast. I'm Teresa Wiedrich, the Homeschool Life Coach at www.capturingthecharmedlife.com. Straight up, you will not get clear on your ideas about how you should homeschool straight away. This first year is not going to clarify everything that you believe to be the ideal approach to your specific child, but it will be a big research year. Just consider this year as your learning opportunity to learn about how your children learn, to learn about your specific child and their needs, to learn how to relate to your child, and also how they relate to each other as siblings, to learn what you need, and to also build a supportive community. So how exactly do you kindergarten in your homeschool? There are so many different ways, innumerable possibilities. And on today's episode, we're going to discuss the, I believe, 20 ideas that I've included for how to do kindergarten in your homeschool. So let's get started. First, I want to tell you about my story of kindergarten with my first kiddo. Kindergarten is a rite of passage, right? Well, I put my first six-year-old daughter on the yellow school bus at the end of the block because that's all I knew at that phase. No one had even introduced me to the idea of homeschooling. When on that day I put my six-year-old daughter on the bus at the end of the block, I walked directly home with my two little girls to load my other two girls into the minivan, buckle them up, and I followed that yellow school bus to the school. Yeah, I did. My oldest daughter bumped along the gravel road on that green vinyl seat while chatting with a new friend. She checked out the first graders behind her and the second graders behind them and behind them the third graders until the bus was bookended with high schoolers. I imagine that my six-year-old daughter looked out that wide window, past the railroad tracks, past the silos, past the silky yellow fields, to the gigantic butter-colored yellow school in anticipation. I would grieve this day by chasing that yellow bus with my camera in the ready position. You would see me if you could have seen me in my minivan with two little kids strapped in the back. You'd see me balance that camera, because it was like a camera and not an iPhone camera, on top of the steering wheel. Or stick it out the side window and photograph those few miles for my scrapbook. This was a momentous day. My daughter began her journey toward independence at age six. Just 1,990 days before, I counted, she and I traveled a different path. A path from the hospital postpartum ward to her cradle in our first two-bedroom apartment. And just 1,990 days before, she fed directly from me. She bathed because Daddy brought her to the foldable tub on the dresser, and she slept because I held her in my arms. Her days of dependence were coming to a close. When I pulled that minivan into the school parking lot, I slowly crept by the bus to capture her first descent off those three black steps. Click, click, click. I was the kindergarten paparazzi. Good job, Hannah, I yelled. Yes, I really did. I'm not sure what I thought she did well. It was me that should have been congratulated because I had managed to stay on the road with two squirming toddlers while I perilously photographed that bus while I drove. Fast forward six years. My youngest, a son, my fourth child, is getting his hair cut. 
The stylist asks how I want his hair prepared for his first day of kindergarten. Hmm, kindergarten? He's four. The cutoff date is January, she tells me. Parents can decide whether a child goes to kindergarten now. It's your choice. Hmm. Somehow the kindergarten years slipped from my awareness. Not that I would have considered kindergarten at age four, but my fourth child, as I homeschooled, pretty much forgot that that might be an option at the point where it could theoretically be an option. I hadn't been thinking about my son going to any school, of course, because he was the youngest of four kids. I wasn't even thinking about grades anymore. I was intentionally facilitating an education for each of my kids based on interests first and also incorporating things I thought were important to share too. Because what did I learn about kindergarten? I learned that kindergarten is a day or days of play centers, introductions to lineups and bag lunches, sounding out letters, counting manipulatives, reading stories at the foot of a teacher, a lovely teacher who's kept in my world since that time, but resting on blankies at quiet times and swinging on playground equipment at recess. And I knew that I could offer that for my kids at home too. I decided to skip the mile drive camera in hand for my four-year-old. I'll simply photograph him on our front porch. Those first 1,990 days slipped silkily through my fingers like one long night. I'll try to keep closer to my youngest son's next 1,990 days and keep him home to learn and play. But what would I do with him at home? What would I do with a kindergarten child if I had one now? If I were to kindergarten homeschool all over again, this would be my version of kindergarten homeschool. I'd read books together and enjoy the books. And if I didn't enjoy the books, I wouldn't read the books. We'd tote home dozens of hard-covered storybooks every week from the library, and we'd probably routinely pay hefty library fines, too. Welcome to homeschooling. Oh, and I'd let my kiddo play with Legos and dolls and draw, or whatever kept his hands busy while I read for a little bit. And a little bit specifically means maybe five minutes, maybe 60. Depends on how long you want to read and how long he wants to listen. I think in learning opportunities, not school subjects. I definitely do five in a row. That is the type of curriculum you can find at the Learning House, a Canadian curriculum supplier. Five in a row. So much fun. But if something stopped being fun, I would stop doing it. I'd probably use a workbook like Evan Moore's books or any ver variety of workbooks you can find out there with big colorful pictures and a place to do maybe printing or number recognition or addition if my kiddo didn't have to work too hard to do the activity. All depends on where my child is at. However, I'd only do it if my kiddo wanted to and I'd only do it in a subject my kiddo wanted to focus in and only for fewer than 20 minutes each day, unless my kiddo wanted to do more. The moral of the story, I would follow my kiddo. We do clockwork practice with a simple clock. I'd explain to him how to use a clock. A minute or two a day is all I would need to explain that clockwork. Just a basic introduction would be all he would need because I would know that a teeny exposure to any subject will eventually make an expert if you do it almost every day. I'd include nature study. We'd go outside every day. Then we'd walk, look at leaves, discover what's hiding under logs in a pond, listen to the bird song, lay in a field, stare up at the sky. Whatever we do, we just hang out in nature together. We'd create a routine and regularly use it. A simple routine. One that didn't force us to wake up too early, especially me, <laughs> but it still allowed us to be present in the morning hours. A routine that honored the other kids in the house 
and their needs. Definitely create a routine that gets him and me enough sleep. One that includes my natural interests too, because I need to be occupied throughout our homeschool journey and enjoy it, but also include his natural interests. I learned flexibility when that routine wasn't working, and I wouldn't do the routine if it wasn't working. One of the things I would do if I could do homeschool kindergarten all over again is not do more. I wouldn't try to be competing with a local private school like I kind of was trying to do in my head, trying to convince myself that whatever I was doing was really more effort and probably more brilliant than a private school education. Not necessary. I wouldn't need to do more and I wouldn't try to compete because I'd know I wasn't trying to make a school at home at all. I'd alter my expectations to understand that my intention in kindergarten or really any homeschool year is not to make my home a school, but create a rich environment for my kids to pursue their curiosities and learn to play. We would chart the weather together. We'd begin to discover different cloud forms and temperature shifts and learn about barometers and thermometer use. Our money would be spent on home science tools or KiwiCo or at-home experiment boxes. If you could afford those, they're just so much fun, so much learning in those boxes. Have no idea what you're supposed to do with that stuff after you're done those boxes. We would do those home experiment boxes because I love science. We would dabble in science fun as often as we could. We would do poetry tea time every day because it's fun. And we'd read any poetry book that struck us as fun or just because it's pretty. We'd include other fun days and create traditions around them even. The first day of homeschool party, the not back to school picnic, the 100 day homeschool party, Halloween homeschool fun. We'd have little women birthday celebrations, an Egyptian party, and we would definitely have fun Fridays from the beginning. If I were to do homeschool kindergarten all over again, not only would I say, don't do school in your home, but make fun your goal. At least make it your goal. We'd also explore art while we read because that's fun to me. Also, I did do that <laughs> through the kindergarten all the way to the high school years. I would learn to do things I love to do with my kids, like engaging art history, including homeschool fine arts. By the way, this is the one thing that I actually wrote about the most on my website, capturingthecharmlife.com, is how to engage art history or doing homeschool fine arts, even if the kids don't want to, or doing fine arts in a child-directed way. I have five posts about those topics because I just love them so much. Along with that value of fun, I would let my kids play. I did let my kids play, but I'd think about play in a different way than I did then. In fact, I would incorporate a lot of play into our day because now I'd know, I'd be confident now that playing is learning. I keep seeing the research declaring that kids' brains learn when they are in play mode. And you know what adult brains do? They learn best when they're in play mode. So encourage your kids, allow your kids, be comfortable with your kids playing. What I wouldn't do was fuss about reading, writing, or arithmetic. I 100% understand why people are compelled to try to include reading, writing, and arithmetic in their kindergarten or grade one years, because everybody else is doing it. And that is definitely most school's intentions are to get kids to read, write, and know basic arithmetic. But why? I'm gonna ask why. Why did we decide that five or six years old is the years that these kids need to know how to do those things? Why? Is it okay if we just dabble in it? And then we discover if we can gradually shift into reading, writing, and arithmetic. Or if you were like me, you have a couple kids that were doing it before kindergarten years. 
can you let them do that even before they get into their kindergarten years? Now I just want to add a caveat here. From my pediatric nursing years, I learned that moms often have a gut instinct that something might not be right with their child. And they were usually right. So if you have a sense that something's not quite right with the way your child is learning to read, write, or do basic arithmetic, work with numbers, get it checked out. In the beginning years, I would not have said to do that. I would have thought you could just roll with it. Let them learn when they learn. And that's cool too. But I'm going to add a caveat. In case you are concerned about your child's abilities in reading, writing, or arithmetic, perhaps you want to get assessed. You want your child assessed, and here's why. Because you won't be wondering if something's wrong. And then if there is something that you can do to address their challenges, you're giving them a benefit now instead of waiting till later and wishing that you'd done that thing already. But I can tell you, if I were to turn back time, I would not be so intent about doing reading, writing, and arithmetic on a schedule because everyone else is doing it. And I begin to ask myself now, in my homeschool kindergarten years, what do I need? And I start practicing that question a lot. Like learning what you need, whether you need more quiet, whether you need to have separate time, whether you need to know how to deal with your emotions, your emotions, not just the kids, whether you know how to deal with conflict in a respectful way, and you know how to share and explain that to your kids too. I would seriously consider what I need and determine to include myself in my homeschool life from the beginning. I would teach my kids to cook. Yeah, in kindergarten. <laughs> this might mean making ants on a log, you know, like raisins on peanut butter with celery, or mac and cheese, or having them chop veggies alongside me at dinner, but I would get them involved early. Now that I'm nearing the end of my mothering days, I can see that teaching them to cook is an amazing benefit to you because you work yourself out of a job when you're teaching them how to cook. And um, to keep it really simple though, I would create a routine with a very simple menu plan. In fact, so simple, I can share it with you in just a few points. Determine what you're going to eat on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Yes, in advance. For the year, <laughs> you can decide that Mondays are fish nights, or Tuesdays are taco nights, or chicken nights, Wednesdays are vegan nights, or vegetarian nights, Thursdays are leftover nights, you gotta have a leftover night in your week, and Fridays are pizza nights, or you fill in the blank. But the key is to make it so simple that you know that every Monday you're doing the same thing, every Tuesday, same thing. And yes, you can probably eat on Saturday and Sunday, but you can keep it flexible. Creating a routine with my menu plan really just helps me feel a whole lot less stressed. If I were to homeschool kindergarten again, I'd incorporate games immediately into my homeschool and see them as learning. All the games, any game, whatever game you were into because I know that we would eventually play every game known to mankind anyway, and probably <laughs> create some along the way. Really, we should have patented a few. Oh, and also, if you can, you probably should invest in Hasbro stocks, because you might as well make some money from all that natural investing. If I were to begin again, I'd read about homeschooling and unschooling, learning and child development. I've got my homeschool mama reading list naturally, so I would read those books. And if you want to read those books, you can head over to the show notes page and find homeschool mama reading list nearer to the bottom of the page. I'd make sure too that I was chatting with other homeschool moms about those books because reading helps me decide how I want to frame things. It gives me perspective, helps me show up on purpose in my homeschool and my life. And if I were to homeschool kindergarten all over again, I would join the homeschool mama book club too. 
But actually, I couldn't do that because it wasn't created yet. By the way, it's actually a thing. You're welcome to join it. We're joining together to chat on Thursday. You can find out more about joining the Homeschool Mama book club on the show notes page to this episode titled How to Do Kindergarten in Your Homeschool, a fun and effective guide. I would also listen to more podcasts <laughs> like Homeschool Mama Self-Care podcast. You're listening to it. And it didn't exist when I was homeschooling my kids until four years ago. I'd also listen to Read Aloud Revival, Honey, I'm Homeschooling the Kids, and Brave Writer with Julie Bogart. Of course, none of these podcasts were around when I began homeschooling, but if I could, I would surround myself with a whole bunch of homeschool mamas and learn from them all. I'd make sure fun was the prime goal of my homeschool kindergarten. When I think of kindergarten in your homeschool, I know that it can be a truly unforgettable experience filled with so much fun and play and joy and discovery and endless learning. It can be. It's not necessarily going to be. You get to set the dynamic for your homeschool kindergarten. I was chatting with one first year homeschooling mama and she said to me, it's been a challenge, I won't lie. I have a toddler and a 10 year old at a public charter classical school. After doing Waldorf grades one to three, he's in grade four now, but doing well. I wish I could homeschool him, but he's super extroverted and I feel like I can't bring him what he needs. But anyway, he's fine. I'm Waldorf homeschooling my seven and nine year old. Homeschooling is a big challenge for me because of self-care, actually. I'm exhausted, over-caffeinated, and burnt out. So I'll just be honest, but I love the benefits, like extra music classes and extracurriculars during the day, and spending time with them, of course, and learning. But what's not working is that I'm not great with regulating my own emotions, and so my kids obviously are the same too. And I appreciate those honest words because that pretty much encapsulates a classic first year homeschooling experience, wouldn't you say? If you're homeschooling in your first year, heading into your first year of homeschool, or you feel like you're a first year homeschooler, then I want to invite you to a free workshop that I'm offering. In this free workshop, you'll learn the most important steps to navigating your first homeschool year with confidence. So bring your questions, bring your stories, learn from other parents. When you first step off the beaten path, leaving the conventional school path, you might have a few uncertainties and doubts. And if you don't, someone around you sure does. Of course, it's a rite of passage for all new homeschoolers to do this. Um, this uncertainty and doubt filled experience, it's pretty typical. Of course, it's a rite of passage for all new homeschoolers to feel uncertain and have some doubts because we are taking responsibility for our child's education and it is a big responsibility. But from one veteran homeschool mama to a new homeschool mama, I'm here to equip you so you can be clear and confident as you get started so you don't have to experience all that uncertainty or feel overwhelmed. You can come up with a plan to deal with your self-care too because I know that you really can do this homeschool thing confidently and enjoy it too. So head over to the show notes page and learn more about the free workshop for first year homeschoolers, or you can head over to the Facebook Homeschool Mama support group and learn more. Get perspective and inspiration to navigate your first homeschool year. And thanks to Jess for your kind words. She said, hi, Teresa, I love what you're doing. We're currently unschooling an almost 13 year old and almost five year old. We've been at it for about two and a half years now, and it's just been evolving since day one. Truth, Jess, that is how it rolls. It evolves until, well, my youngest child that I wrote about in this episode is now entering high school and it's still evolving. But I'm grateful for every moment, every memory, and every opportunity to be together for those 1,990 days before kindergarten and for the other number of days that happened after. I didn't count. 
You want to know what the biggest disadvantage of being a homeschool mom podcaster is? Hanging out in my closet, talking to theoretically you, but not knowing who you are, (laughs) not knowing how I am actually serving you. So I would be so grateful if you could reach out to me and let me know how this podcast is serving you. And if you want to do it through an Apple or Spotify review, I would be deeply grateful. So you know all the resources I discussed in this episode are found on the show notes page titled How to Do Kindergarten in Your Homeschool, a Fun and Effective Guide over at my website, www.capturingthecharmlife.com. Until next week, I want for you and your homeschool kids to turn your homeschool challenges into your homeschool charms. You got this, girlfriend.